Okay, so the weather is back in the 60s this week, and I think that's the perfect temperature for doing outdoor projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of it and build a nice sitting area for my new fire pit. Now this is going to be a huge project and I didn't have that much time to complete it in. So I went ahead and asked Cody to give me a hand with it. And the first thing that I did was figure out exactly where I wanted the seating area. I wanted to maintain the two walkways going to my shop and also over to the pool area. So I first laid down some string to get a general idea. Then once I liked it, I came back with some spray paint to permanently mark it so that I could then start removing the dirt in between. Now I'm going down seven inches and to save myself a little bit of work digging, I went ahead and rented a tiller. Also, it's important to note that I just recently had all of my utilities located, so I knew for absolute certainty that this area was clear for me to dig. And I am not bashful to say that this part of the job completely kicked my butt. Whew. Goodness me. Now this is a big area to tackle. This is actually th 380 square feet, which generated just under eight cubic yards of dirt. It was the original plan to just shovel it out by wheelbarrow, but very quickly realized that that was gonna be way, way too time consuming. So instead I went ahead and rented a mini skid skier, which is pretty much a compact tractor that's made to fit in between residential gates. And not only was this thing an absolute blast, but it made very quick work of removing all of the dirt. Now, eight yards of dirt is a lot of dirt to be moving. So our buddy lent us his dump trailer so that I could move the dirt from the backyard and right into the dump trailer. And you can see just how big the trailer is, but I was able to fill it up two times. Total, I believe it took me around four hours to remove all of the dirt. And we went ahead and kept the tiller just a little bit longer and Cody used it to go over the few spots where I did not go down deep enough on the first pass. When I got the majority of the loose dirt removed, I would flatten out the bucket of the tractor and push it forward to scrape along to try to create a nice flat, even bottom. I would start on one section of the pit and then just slowly work my way around and until the vast majority of the loose dirt was removed. Then we were able to come back with some hand shovels and not only scrape out the loose dirt, but also define the edges. Before laying down the landscaping fabric, I went ahead and treated the area with some weed killer as well. But then I got one of those giant rolls, rolled it out, cut its length, and made all of my overlaps at least 12 inches. Then it was time to start adding the base material, which is gonna be three and a half inches of crushed granite gravel. Cody and I worked out a system to where he would fill up the wheelbarrow and dump it into the pit, and then I would move it around with the rake. At this point, I was just doing my best eyeballing it, trying to get it level. To kind of get a gauge, I grabbed a dowel rod and marked off three and a half inches. Then I went around several points in the pit to gauge the depth of the gravel. Once I was happy with it, then I moved on to the next step, which is compacting it. Now I went ahead and rented a compactor for the day because the area is so large. And I made two passes all the way around. It was at this point my father-in-law showed up and threw out a great recommendation of including an empty conduit pipe to go from one end to the other. Just in case anybody ever needs to run anything across this area, they won't have to dig up or damage any of the pavers. Once I recompacted that area, then we started adding the sand. Now before spreading the sand, I laid down one inch diameter steel conduit pipes to not only act as depth gauge because I wanted two inches of sand, but also they really help out on the screening process. After I got down the first layer of sand, then I could move them to the top, lay down a second inch of sand, and then use them as rails to help me pull off all of the excess sand and get this area nice and level. So you'll see here, we're just moving a two by four down those conduit pipes and taking off all of the excess sand with us. We went through and did this until the entire area was done. And anytime that there was a low spot, you can just simply take the sand and fill it in and then rescreet that one area. Now in my area, I actually made a slight slope so that all of the water runoff will wanna go into the side yard and not towards either one of the house or the shop. Then I could remove the steel pipes and fill in those voids. Then use the compactor once again and make two laps around to compress all of that sand. 
Okay, and then it was on to laying pavers. Now, all of the materials for this project can be found at the Home Depot. And I purchased the pavers and, for that matter, all of the rental equipment using my Home Depot consumer credit card. The Home Depot consumer credit card is great for these large, large projects. So if you have a large project on your plate and also want to help support my channel, then be sure to check out thdcard.com slash April. There's a link for you in the description. Now, when it came time to start laying the pavers, I started with the two walkways first. And I didn't start right up next to the building because all of those pavers will need to be cut in order to fit. And I'm gonna save all of the cutting until last. Now, this part of the job goes much quicker if you have two people, one person to throw over what's needed and then one person laying them down. Dude, I can lay down some light bricks no. up here on the edge. Don't touch my bricks. What? And if you're working with multiple pavers, I found it really beneficial to give each one a distinct name so you can just holler out what you need. Dark. A rectangle. We got it here. Dude, how slick does that look? All right, let's do it over there now. Okay. It was at this point where a lot of the family started showing up. And with all the extra hands around to help bring in pavers, things really started moving along quickly. After getting both of the walkways done, then I moved over to the center. Now again, I'm starting in the center and I'm saving anything that needs to be cut until last. Oh, and this is Texas weather for you. It went from sunny and 70 to windy and 30. But my family are troopers and hung in there to help me get it done in record time. Now to make all of these inside cuts, somebody on Instagram saw what I was doing and made the suggestion to pull up some of the walkway pavers so that I could lay down full pavers in the center and just pop a line across them. And that's exactly what I did. I've seen a lot of different methods on how to cut pavers, but most of them being done with a angle grinder or just a chisel and hammer. I went ahead and put a diamond tip blade in my circular saw and I'm just gonna try to make one pass. You get the cleanest cut if you're able to cut all the way through the paver. So one advantage of using a circular saw is that you're able to cut all the way through the paver. And as you can see, those two lines came out very straight and I was able to get both sides completely done in I think under 30 minutes. So it went by very quick and easy. But then I could go back in and replace the walkway papers that I removed earlier. I did end up using a right angle grinder with, with a diamond tip wheel in it for all of the bricks up near the patio, as well as over by the shop door and the, and the pool patio. And the grinder does great, it's just you have to cut both sides, so it's a little bit more time consuming. With all of the pavers now cut and in place, now I apply the edging. And this will just hold the pavers in place so they won't start wanting to drift out over time. Okay, and we are finally to the last step, applying the sand on top of the pavers. I used a shovel to just toss it all around the area so that I could then come back with the broom and sweep it all into the cracks and crevices. Then I once again brought out the compactor and went over the entire area. And just to speed up the process, Cody and Forrest came back behind me as I was moving along and would sweep more sand into the cracks so I could just continuously make passes until the sand stopped sinking in. Here is a before and after shot for you. Now, don't forget, if you have a big project of your own to tackle, to check out thdcard.com slash April. There's a link in the description for you. So if you're gonna be tackling your own seating area or a paved walkway, I think the most important thing is that you need to be going down at least seven to eight inches so that you can apply that proper base material. There's no point on going through all of this work and effort if your pavers aren't gonna look good in just a few years. Okay, so that's it for this one. Um, from my family to yours, I wanna wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope to see everybody back in 2017. I've never done this before, so I don't know what's good and what's not, you know? <laughs> That seems, that seems to be a common thread in your life, Rachel. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. Hey, it's worked out so far, huh? I'm pretty sure this is the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> we can probably just dump that out. <laughs>